Vegas at the uh, HP uh, Technology Forum. I'm at the Active Power Booth uh, with Martin. Uh, we just had a chance to look at the HP Pod system, but uh, this is kind of the secret uh, that makes the pod work. That's what keeps it spinning, yeah. We stand in front of the, uh, the powerhouse over here, which is uh, a 40-foot container, essentially the same type of setup as the pod, but uh, that contains all the, the power and cooling utility uh, that defeats the pod and makes makes it run, so it ensures the um, uh, optimal power quality. Ensures that when we have an outage, um, that, that that will eventually happen um, uh, in in the grid. We fire up our generators and we continue to move uh, or, or to send power to the to the pod itself. So so your setup it looks like into three major sections to the container, right? Yeah, there's essentially four four uh, four sections to it, but there's three sections physically here on the powerhouse we're looking at right now, and the ones you're referring to here would be the generator itself, so there's a standby diesel generator with a fuel tank in it. Uh, we'll go take a look at that in a minute. We also have the switch gear, the transfer switch uh, section, uh, which takes care of all the distribution of power. And then finally you have the flywheel UPS itself, and then the external uh, part of it is going to be the air cool chiller that, that cools it. Okay. Well, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the, uh, at the generator. I get a couple comments there. Maybe skip over the, switch, the transfer switch and then get into the heart of the system, namely the, the uh, flywheel itself. Okay, Martin. We're here now in the uh, in the main generator portion of the pod. A little bit, a little bit cramped getting in, but surprising amount of room once you're inside. Yeah, uh, this is the uh, just a standard generator compartment, if you will. Um, we got the sound attenuation on the walls. We got the air intake for the generators, and we got our diesel standby generator here, which is going to take care of the uh, the power to the pod uh, when the power is out, and we uh, we fire this one up fairly quickly. Um, in a matter of five to eight seconds. Um, we have a gen start system that sits in here as well, so we remove the batteries off of the generator as well, only because this is going to sit outside in an environment where temperatures can be you know, high, and which, which is obviously not good for batteries. So the gen start ensures that we fire up the generator uh, as, as fast as, as humanly possible here. So, so uh, how much fuel is actually stored uh, with the system uh, here in the pod? There are a few hundred gallons of, of fuel storage here, and that ensures about a 16-hour uh, ride through at 75% load. And you could refuel that once you're, you, you're on generator. We can refuel that on, on going. We could also configure bigger uh, uh, fuel storage, but it's, it's a few hundred gallons, and uh, you would either have that in here, which is a standard, or you could have that outside as well. So, so what, um, what sort of uh, maintenance uh, cycle? How often is the system tested, and how is it tested? So typically we test about once every month, and that's pretty standard in the industry to ensure that the generator fires up. And uh, it, we run it for about a couple of hours, uh, and we can either or the customer can either um, uh, have the generator support the the pod once you do that. Uh, although the, the the traditional you would have a load bank, which is essentially just a resistive load come out, and you would uh, use that as a as a load testing device for the generator, so we don't interfere with a with a critical IT load. Right. So it'd all just be dumped at heat and dumped as heat into that into that load bank. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go ahead. Uh, we'll we'll kind of go past the the switchgear room and then uh, into the uh, uh, into the flywheel. Let's do it. Okay. Well, we're in the uh, final section of the uh, power, power pod right now, and we've actually got uh, uh, two flywheel uh, s transfer systems, but uh, one of them with a glass front so we can see what's going on. Yes. So we're standing in front of the, the flywheel UPS system here, which is really the unique part of this one here and what really allows us to get it into a very compact footprint. So we eliminate all those uh, uh, space-consuming batteries and certainly also the maintenance and replacement that comes with it. And we put uh, the flywheel uh, uh, system in here, which is your energy storage now, so that re directly replaces the, uh, the battery itself for ride-through. It's a uh, slow-spinning flywheel, 7,700 RPM. To give you an idea, it's about 600 mi uh, miles an hour tip speed on that. Mm -hmm. We spin that in a vacuum in there. Uh, magnetically levitated, uh, so it essentially we, we continue to motor that during normal operation. Just keep it within a certain speed band. Mm -hmm. Now, when when we uh, when we have an outage uh, of the power, flywheel takes over and provides power to the pod by essentially turning into a generator. So we take the kinetic energy out of that and we, we feed the, uh, the, uh, the pod. So we got two of them. We got a 250 kilowatt here and a 250 kilowatt here for a combined 500 kilowatt, about half a megawatt of power, to be supplied over there. So now the flywheel housing itself, it looks uh, it's larger than a 55-gallon drum, uh, say cut in, cut in half, 
but uh, it it looks like it's uh, shock mounted. Is there a lot of vibration associated with this? There are virtually no vibrations on. In fact, you can't even hear it when it runs. Uh, it's, it sits inside this cast iron vessel here, if you will. Um, it does have uh, some uh, shock vibration on it, but uh, that's that's merely just for uh, seismic events and uh, stuff okay. like that. Because uh, in itself, it's extremely quiet. Uh, you would not notice that it, w it were running if, if it was started up. So, so is it a sealed a sealed unit? Uh or, or you, you've got a vacuum system here as well, right? Yeah, it's a completely sealed unit. It spins in a complete vacuum, so no uh, windage, no friction. We have a vacuum pump that maintains that vacuum in there, and, and therefore we get a very, very efficient system out of it too. So this runs as a 98% efficient system as opposed to a battery UPS, which would be 92% efficient. Um, so uh, overall, we cut the, the electricity bill by about 75% doing it this way here. So what's your uh, delivery uh, as uh, someone orders a pod with a certain configuration, certain power requirements? Uh, do you have uh, a totally custom unit, or do you have certain uh, standard sizes? We have standard sizes for it. So we have uh, four standard configurations that we use, all optimized for the pod, and they come in 250, 500, 750, 1,000 kVA type of, of configurations. Uh, but customers have a, typically have their own requirements, and we can, we can customize. To us, it's not as much customization as just tweaking it a little bit. But we can pretty much tweak it to customer requirements as we go. But generally speaking, it's a, it's a standard system here. Yeah. And uh, delivery, what are the delivery times? Uh, it's typically about 10 to 12 weeks, and that really comes down to the um, uh, supply of the generator. The generator is always the bottleneck in this. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we can find one, we can we can do it quicker. Uh, if there's some specific <coughs> excuse me specific requirements, it could take a little longer. But generally speaking, 10 to 12 weeks, and we can put entire power and cooling infrastructure in place. Yeah. Martin, for uh, more information on Active Power, your uh, company, and these products, where do people need to go? Go to powerhouse.activepower.com. And uh, you'll find, <coughs> excuse me, find all, find all the information up there. Okay, very good. Well, thanks very much for joining us here on the Tech Podcast uh, Network. Yeah.